Right. This morning, I'd just like to tell you um, about a little incident that ha has happened in my life. Um, it involves my sister, my sister Joy. I think perhaps a few of you will know she's my elder sister. Um, she's in a residential care home. It is Christian-based, and it's called Koinonia. And for the scholars here, we know that means fellowship with God, or more commonly, with fellow Christians. And what prompted me to uh, say this was that a few weeks ago, I received a letter from Joy, and it, it enclosed a quotation. Um, and I'm going to read it to you first, and then I'll perhaps read it again later. It's the one who leads you makes no mistakes. The one who guides you has the right directions. The one who counsels you has the wisest answers. The one who provides for you has the greatest resources. The one who blesses you brings the greatest joy. And I have been thinking about it quite a bit and just thought I'd, I'd tell you a little bit about joy. Um, as you perhaps know or can gather, I am considerably older than a lot of you. But um, many years ago, 1945, on February the 4th, we had been to church with mum and dad, we being my elder sister, my younger sister, and a cousin who lived with us. So there were four girls. We had a wonderful pastor of this Pentecostal church, and his name was Pastor Rain. And each week he would pray, um, speak, and often include little stories for the children. Because in those days there were a number of children that went to the church. And this particular Sunday he'd spoken about the sheep that was lost and how Jesus found him, or the shepherd found him, and he was brought back to the fold. As we got home, it was a reasonably long journey to church. We had a, quite a long bus ride. When we got home, Mum and Dad often spoke about the sermon um, and would include us as well. And she had done this, especially Mum, and she had directed her questions and talked to, to all of us. At any rate, it was time for me to go to bed. I was the next to youngest, my older, younger sister was quite a baby. And so I went upstairs to bed. But I heard mum carrying on talking to um, my cousin and sister. And at one stage she said to them, have you ever thought about giving your lives to Jesus? And I heard this because I'd crept down and I was sitting on the stairs and looking to mum talking. And I know as young as I was, I thought, why hasn't she said this to me? But I guess she thought I was too young. So I did run downstairs, and as my cousin and sister were saying they wanted to, I said I would too. And so 1945, for many years, as you all know, it's the year the Second World War ended. It was a memorable day. Um, on February the 4th, and it just, it led me to the long trail or track that I've had through life, always keeping at the forefront my love of Jesus Christ. Um, I started to look through um, some quotations, because this, which I've read out to you, was a quotation, and I read... Um, I looked at Charles Spurgeon because my father was a preacher and would often refer to him. And one of the um, quotes I read was, I have a great need for Christ. I have a great Christ for my need. And I thought that was just, just wonderful. Another one by someone else was, not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path. And he who sends the storm 
steers the vessel. So I just would like just once more to read it to you. I would like to mention that looking on the, um, the Ridgeway internet, just seeing what Brian was speaking about this morning, which is God in the storms of life. And it's the one who leads you, makes no mistakes. The one who guides you has the right directions. The one who counsels you has the wisest answers. The one who provides for you has the greatest resources. And the one who blesses you brings the greatest joys.